Hey there, it's Ryan Haley, broker with Atlantic Shores Sotheby's International Realty here in Ocean City, Maryland, coming to you for this week's edition of This Week in Housing in Ocean City, Maryland. And it is now May 5th, Tuesday, May 5th here at the beach. And um, I hope everybody has heard the news, but we got some great news here last night that the, uh, the mayor of Ocean City has announced that we will be opening up the beaches as well as the boardwalk beginning this Saturday, um, May 9th. So that is great news. Uh, it's something that we all anticipated was gonna be happening here soon, um, but it's actually happening a little bit sooner than later, which is a great thing and shows confidence that uh, we're getting ready and actually probably are kind of in the pre phase one of the opening plan here in Maryland. Um, now there are still um, other things in place like the governor's stay at home order uh, that's still going on. And uh, we're confident that hopefully Governor Hogan will take us into an official phase one here soon. But as far as the local economy, as far as uh, local confidence here from Ocean City, Maryland, it's a great step in the right direction. So beaches and boardwalk uh, will be opening up here on May 9th, Saturday. Great Mother's Day gift. Um, so anyway, just wanted to get into this week in housing and share with you uh, some of the changes I've seen, what's going on in the real estate market, what's going on in the economy, how are things recovering, are they going to recover, are we there yet, what is going on with home prices, are prices going to dip, are they going to go up, so I want to get into a little bit of that with you here today. So. I'm going to start off here and share our local numbers, uh, just like I did here last week with you, and give you a look right into our multiple listing system, uh, which is right here. And what you will see um, in the last seven days, um, we have 10 coming soon. So these are listings that are getting ready to go on the market. 35 new listings have come on in the market in the last seven days. And I just want to make sure you guys realize this is for Worcester County, Maryland, here uh, where Ocean City is located. It does not include Wicomico, and it doesn't include Sussex County, Delaware. So it's specifically to Ocean City. But we've had 35 new properties come on the market, um, 20 back to actives. I can tell you the majority of these um, were properties that were taken off temporarily at the start of COVID-19 and our coronavirus pandemic and now um, are realizing that they need to be back on market because we're seeing things um, normalized to some extent. Uh, we've had 26 price reductions. These are people who are right sizing their price to make sure that they're in front of the traffic uh, that is starting to come to Ocean City and look at properties. We had nine properties actually go up. Um, they decided that, um, once again, probably a sign of confidence that they feel that they can raise their price currently. Uh, 10 active under contract. These are properties that have a contract, but there is a contingency in them. 37 new pendings here in the last seven days. These are properties buyer and seller agreed to a contract price and has now gone under contract. 44 closed. These have gone to settlement. Uh, new buyers are going to be able to experience uh, Ocean City this summer and sellers who were successful in selling their property. Uh, temporary uh, off market. Uh, these are properties that are temporarily taken off. Um, withdrawns, canceled, and then our expireds. Uh, typically, we see a, a fair amount of expireds here at the beginning of the month, and that's what this is. Um, a lot of that has to do sometimes with agents just not paying attention, not renewing the listing, not extending the listing. So what I want to focus on here, two things as I do every week, um, the new listings, new inventory, 35 this week, last week in the seven days prior, we had 32. So that's a 9% increase in um, in, in the number of new listings, which is good. We need to continue to have listings. And I'm going to talk about that here a little bit later in the show. And then our pendings. So we have 37 this week. Last week we had 33. That's an 11% increase over last week's number. So we're seeing this, um, this situation where people are having confidence. Um, I know myself. I know our team, our company. We've been busy. We've got properties going under contract, and we're showing properties, more importantly. So uh, showings then lead to, to settlements. So up 11% week over week, um, which is great news. Actually, our pendings are outpacing our new listings, which does pose a problem. And I'm going to talk about that once again here in just a few minutes. So that's our look at the last seven days in the weekly market. Um, now what I wanted to go to was show you 
some more of the national numbers and where is everybody thinking we're going to be uh, as far as a comeback. I want to start off by saying that unlike 2008, what we have today is a health crisis. It's not a real estate crisis. And in fact, the more economists, the more people I follow, the chatter the, the, and, the, and the biggest play right now that they think is going to happen, yes, we are in a recession. Um, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, but the GDP was down in the first quarter. We're going to definitely see that in the second quarter. That's the definition of a recession. But unlike 2008, where we had a housing crisis, this go around, we are actually, real estate is poised to take us out of this recession. It could be the number one driving factor of our economy um, that pulls us out of the recession is getting everybody back to work, construction, um, the, the housing world in general is very strong and could be what gets us out of this recession. So real estate's come back. One thing that's interesting to look at right now um, is the, the, the history of rents and the median asking rent and what has gone on. You go back to 1988 and you chart this all the way to 2020. And you can see the median asking rent has continued to rise. So what does this mean? Two things. For the renter out there, you are continuing to see your rents being raised on you. And you're building zero equity in the process. So you're paying rent, you're paying somebody else's mortgage, and the rents are continuing to rise. Right? So when interest rates are very low, purchasing becomes a better option than renting because the rents are higher. And at the same time, you're starting to build equity in something that's your own property, which you then can use um, to fund other things with refinance down the road. So we continue to see these rents rise. Also, which is interesting, as a real estate investor, the rental market is strong and your, the return on your investment actually improves when those median rents rise. So two great things there for housing, for real estate and purchasing. I want to show you this too. So obviously there's been a lot of news in the world right now with interest rates. And I just wanted to point out to you, especially if you are a renter now and you've been considering buying and looking at the benefit of purchasing and owning property versus paying somebody else's mortgage. If you look at this, a $200,000 mortgage and just back in December of 2019, 30 year mortgage rate right at 4%, the interest paid over 33 years, or 30 years, 144,000. Today, if you can get in at 3.25 on a 30 year, you would pay $112,000. Now this is just since December. That's a savings of over $31,000 over the course of the 30 year loan, which is huge. Now let's look at a $400,000 mortgage. So when you have a $400,000 mortgage, same rates, 4%, Versus today at 3.23, that's a savings of $63,000 over the course of 30 years, which is just amazing. It just, just points to such a great opportunity that we have right now. I showed you this one last week, um, and, and there was only really one change on here that I wanted to point out, but our four major financial institutions, which handle trillions of dollars, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, all are still in agreement here in the last week of this V-shaped recovery. We're seeing this V-shaped recovery. The only difference here is Q1 is now final. This is, this is true numbers here. GDP down 4.8%. That's negative GDP of 4.8% in Q number one, quarter number one. Everybody knows quarter number two is going to be ugly. It's, gonna, it's not going to look good. When you stop the world economy, you stop all of our businesses, Quarter number two is not going to look good. But look what happens. Coming out in quarter number three, three of the four all agree we're going to see this V-shaped strong recovery with positive GDP. Only one, Wells Fargo, which still thinks we're going to be down. And then when we get into quarter number four of 2020, all are in agreement of positive GDP. So I just wanted to point out that change, 4.8%. Once again, we're going to hear some pretty ugly numbers in the next couple of weeks, but you have to remember, what else do you expect? I mean, when the world stops, things aren't going to look good. Four point, negative 4.8% solid or is a concrete number. 
we're, this second quarter also going to be down. Um, I think Friday we get the unemployment numbers, and it's it's not going to be pretty there either. Um, you're looking at probably 15 to 20 percent unemployment rate, but what you have to keep in mind is that still means that 80 percent are employed, and people are going to focus on the 20 percent, 15 to 20 percent that that are unemployed. And believe me, that sucks. It's terrible. It should not be that way, but it is, and and and. It's going to affect us moving forward, but with that, 80% are still employed, and a lot of people are looking for housing. A lot of people need homes, and that's why I believe real estate's going to pull us out of this. So what I want to show you here, and this, this just um, solidifies that, that our um, impact on real estate showings uh, going back to January, you can see that our numbers January, December, slower time of year as far as showings go. And this is impact of COVID-19 to real estate showings in North America. So normally they're a little bit lower in that time of year. But as we approach spring, they start to increase. And that's exactly what happened all the way up into the first week of March. Enter COVID-19, dropping off like a cliff. And now look what's happened. So that first week in April, we started seeing everything climb back up. Then I did a little dip. Now we're on the upswing again. We're getting very close to what would be your typical um, beginning part of the year as far as activity goes. Um, here in Ocean City, I think we're above that. I'm, I'm seeing more traffic and I anticipate that as we enter um, the next couple of weeks, especially with the beach and boardwalk being announced that's going to be open, we're going to see this start to increase and get above the blue line. <clears throat> so, good news for housing that I've shared with you thus far. Locally, we're up 11% as far as pendings go. We're also up 9% on listings, which is what we need. Um, nationally, a lot of the economists believe that we're going to see good economic growth um, coming into the third and fourth quarter of this year. But what's the biggest threat to real estate? What is the biggest problem that we could have that could possibly derail our growth and, and the rebound, the real estate comeback. Well, this is coming from the Z report. We know that inventory as a percent of households sits at the absolute lowest level ever. So when you look at the total number of households in the United States versus how many homes are actually for sale, we are at the lowest numbers ever, the lowest level ever since they've been keeping stats. And what does that mean? So the biggest threat to our real estate housing market um, nationally, and especially I see it here at the beach, is good inventory, homes for sale. We need more homes for sale. Um, the buyers are there. The interest rates are low. There's opportunity and there's great opportunity for listings that come on the market that are priced in and around where they need to be and that show well. And so this is where I'm making the plea. If you've considered selling um, and for whatever reason it didn't work out in the past, you were on the market or you may be under this misconception that now is not a good time to sell, we need to have a conversation because we need to talk about the opportunities that you might have right now to get your property sold um, with low inventory and allowing your property to stand out and even possibly get a little bit more than, than what you thought you could get. So lowest levels ever of homes for sale and inventory. Here's another look at it. March buyer traffic. This shows where the buyers are in our country. Gray being weak. There is not a single state in the entire country that has weak buyer demand right now. The light blue is stable. That's where it's probably a, a six-month supply of, of homes for sale, pretty even market between buyers and sellers. And then the spots that are extremely strong buyer traffic. And you can see almost our whole mid-Atlantic, with the exception of Delaware in March, had strong buyer demand. That includes all of our beaches right here in Maryland. Right? So strong buyer demand. And then we look at the February seller traffic. How many sellers essentially have decided to list and sell? 
And this gray number here is weak. So these are the weak areas where there's not enough sellers. There's not enough seller traffic. Blue is stable. And then dark blue is strong. So we've got Alaska and Wyoming are the only two spots where there's essentially strong seller traffic, meaning there's more properties out there than buyers are necessarily wanting to buy. So that case there um, is more of a buyer's market. But if you look, this is February now. Our area in both Maryland and Delaware, we're weak seller traffic, meaning we need more listings based on the demand from buyers. Now let's go into March. And this is, this is you know, even more interesting because what happened? When the, when the onset of COVID-19 came into play, people panicked. People took their homes off the market. And, and for good reason, I get that, especially in the primary housing market. You need, people didn't necessarily want other people coming through their homes um, and putting them at risk. Um, but in our market, where a lot of our second home condos and vacation homes are vacant, um, we needed that inventory and people still took their homes off the market. So our March seller traffic, only three states in the country had stable seller traffic. One, Alaska had strong seller, meaning there was a lot of listings, and everywhere else, we saw weak seller traffic, not enough listings for sale. So going back to the slide that I started with, the biggest threat right now is homes for sale. We need more listings. And like I said, if you have kicked it around at all, um, the idea of possibly selling your property, we need to have a conversation. I would love to help you. I'd love to show how we can take Langshore Sotheby's International Realty Marketing Plan combined with your property to ensure that um, we reach the greatest potential of buyers and put you in a good spot to sell here as we enter the spring market, the new spring market, which is going to be later. Um, so one other thing to think about is May is like our normal March. That's what I'm anticipating the traffic to be here in the Ocean City market. Um, we went into quarantine. Um, March 17th, you know, right around St. Patrick's Day weekend. And I believe we are going to be coming out of it right around May 17th um, as our beaches should be open, um, anticipating that we'll see from the governor the, um, the uh, stay-at-home order to be lifted during phase one. We'll be coming right into Memorial Day weekend. So if you're considering selling, now's the time that we have a conversation. We prep the property. We get it on the market. So sorry for the long uh, this week in housing report, but I wanted to make sure I gave you um, as much information as possible. I'm going to continue to do this on a weekly basis. Um, but in the meantime, should you have any questions about these reports and you'd like me to get into it and dissect it even a little bit more or take a look at the Delaware beaches or inland, it would be my absolute pleasure to help in any way that I can. Um, I hope you are staying happy, healthy, sane, safe um, during these times. And we look forward to seeing you back here at the beach in the very near future. So enjoy your week and we will get back to you again next week with This Week in Housing in Ocean City. Take care.